Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the inaugural episode of A to Z of Flavor Odyssey. I'm your host, Robbie Raz. We have the co-host, Randy Griggs, and we are coming to you from Lot B, Cigar Dojo Studio, on the West Coast, California. Randy, my good friend, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic, man. Super excited to get things going. Obviously, we've been working to get this uh, on the road for a couple weeks now, but uh, here we are. We finally made it. You're not supposed to tell them that. Oh, shoot. (laughs) No, we already told them that a couple times. I get to do those fun little live videos. It was great. Uh, No, that was, uh, yeah, we're we're only like six weeks behind schedule. (laughs) Something to that effect. But, uh, But it doesn't matter. We're here now. Uh, Flavor Odyssey, you guys um, are tuning in, so obviously you have an idea of what uh, we're going to be doing, but we'll give you kind of just a little overview. Uh, We are going to be pairing cigars and beer. Um, uh, I have some experience in the cigar industry and in the beer industry. Randy, you've got extensive experience in the beer industry, and uh, you have become a pretty big time cigar smoker over the last few years as well that's true <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I've, I've been uh I, I i've gotten pretty deep in into cigars i don't think i've actually told you i i uh recently obtained my um certified tobacconist certification that's fancy yeah you're you're certified yeah, tobacconist yeah, yeah, yeah. certification <laughs> That is uh, from the redundancy uh, cons- consum- department. Consumer of, uh, tobacconist certification. Indeed. That's so what, what is what does that mean exactly? Um, it means I read a lot about cigars now. Yeah, that's about it. I, I know that there's a filler, stimulating, a binder, and a wrapper. And now are they all made of tobacco? Ooh, mm. ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, <laughs> tough, tough one. Anyway, we are actually going to take this seriously. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, cigars beer pairing we're going from a to z um this is episode one inaugural episode so we're starting with numbers and then uh we'll go from a to z after that uh so we are not really pairing uh picking these pairings based on actually we're not picking these pairings really at all except for this first one uh we're not picking them based on you know what we think is going to pair well together what we think is going to you know be a, a successful pairing we are kind of at the mercy of the uh the alphabet and uh with this first one uh, let's let's kind of jump into what this first pairing is, uh, just real quick, and then we'll kind of uh, t- 
talk about why we should even be talking about this stuff. Uh, this first pairing, Randy, tell everybody what uh, we're going with numbers. So tell everybody what we're doing. Uh, correct. So we are starting with uh, a pairing that we have chosen a beer from a brewery that we know and love here locally in Northern California called 21st Amendment. Uh, we are going to be drinking the El Sully, which is a Mexican lager from the 21st Amendment brewery. Uh, 21st Amendment, of course, was the uh, repeal of prohibition here in America, with the 18th Amendment being uh, the bro prohibition of alcohol. Uh, so, uh, with the brand uh, 21st Amendment, it really uh, celebrates beer culture and, and American history. Uh, throughout all of their uh, different packages and uh, and this is a, a, a fun one uh, Sean O'Sullivan along with Nico Freccia uh, founded the company 21st Amendment originally um, Sean O'Sullivan goes by uh, Sully as, as a nickname and really wanted to have a Mexican lager in, in his portfolio he enjoyed drinking uh, Mexican lagers on the weekends and Decided that, he, that he'd go ahead and develop one and so uh, kind of named after him uh, In the El Soli nomenclature Nomenclature is a good word <clears throat> It's fun to say <laughs> um, So Francis. in pairing with uh, <laughs> In pairing we haven't even like seriously we're like three sips in we haven't even really started drinking and you're right I'm totally looking at the wrong screen. I'm not looking up here. I'm looking down here uh, so the camera's up there, and then we have a screen down here that's, like, so we can see where we're moving, and I can tell if you guys can see the cigar that I'm holding up for you. Uh, so bear with us if we get distracted, which will most definitely happen. Uh, so 21st Amendment, <clears throat> to pair with that, uh, Randy and I decided to go with the Intemperance uh, B-A-X-X-I from Romacraft. Uh, now, uh, if you're familiar with your Roman numerals, <clears throat> which... We Jack all, uh, Hayer is not. <laughs> Neither Jack were you, Hire. really. Hire. Neither were you before this well, I did, happened. I, I didn't remember. I wasn't even going to bring it up. You threw Jack under the bus. Um, anyway, well, he makes a big stink about that. This doesn't have numbers. It's, it says XXI on it. Well, which Jack, of course. Yeah. Sorry, Jack, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> so XXI is 21 in Roman numerals, which also stands for the 21st Amendment. So you see the natural pairing, mm -hmm. if you will, between the two. Uh, we're going to find out if it's a natural pairing. Um, I, I'm a little skeptical, but we'll see what happens. Um, so the uh, the intemperance uh, B A. <laughs> oh my goodness! Pardon me. B A X. I don't have a sneeze button. I don't know where to go. That was, that was epic. I don't know if we're gonna come back from that. <laughs> the, uh, is, <laughs> the intemperance. B A X X I from Overcraft. B A Brazilian Araparaca. Arap Araparaca. It's Avada Kedavra. Araparaca is the way that I've always said. Araparaca. I don't know if that's right, but that's the way that I always say it. Anyway, it's a phenomenal rapper, um, <clears throat> and this blend's been around since 2012. Uh, it was the, I believe. Now, Skip, you can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, and I'm sure you will. <clears throat> Um, but hopefully most of it's correct. Um, this is 2012. That was right when Roma Craft was formed with uh, Skip Martin and um, uh, Mike wow, Rosales. Mike Rosales. Thank you. I was thinking Danny <laughs> Vasquez because we were just talking about Danny, who also works for Roma Craft, but he was not there at the beginning. Anywho, <clears throat> um, they came together in 2012, uh, started Roma Craft to Bach, and the Intemperance line, the two different lines, the BA and the, uh, and the EC, were the first two releases from the Roma Craft company. Now, the Cro-Magnon has been around longer, but that was released before Roma Craft came together. So this was the first as far as I, I know. Kicking a little knob, uh, that was a bit of that. That was, well, I, I still don't understand how Cro-Magnon was around before Roma Craft. Well, that was, Skip released that Cro-Magnon before oh, um, yes, yes, uh, yes. with uh, the Chief Hava cigar. Oh, Hava okay. cigar website. Yep. Yep. Um, that was they weren't banded. These weren't banded when they first came out either. Uh, <clears throat> that all changed years later. But anyway, we're getting kind of lost in the weeds here. 
So this is uh, it's Brazilian Arapuraca, Indonesian binder, uh, Nicaraguan and Dominican fillers. So <clears throat> we went with this pairing because, like we said, numbers, 21st Amendment. This was something that we both uh, wanted to do, and I'm hopeful that it's going to turn out well. So we'll see. Um, I can get let's, now, right? You can. We've been. We were supposed to cut it and light it, and, and we got to drink the beer. We have to do all that stuff. So much. Uh, to but I know it's, here. it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do. Um, but Randy, so you are uh, in the beer industry mm. professionally. Yes, sir. You are not a professional cigar smoker, <laughs> but we're working on it. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so tell me, tell us, us being me and the listeners, the viewers, uh, a little bit about yourself, your background. Uh, in the beer industry and uh, your cigar background as well. Great. Uh, yeah, so I started as a home brewer, uh, right at 21 years old, found a home brew shop. I was uh, working in a little brewery in Hayward, California. Shout out to Buffalo Bills. And uh, uh, pretty quickly thereafter, I, got, I really had a, a knack for beer. I became a beer judge. And uh, today I oversee the craft portfolio for Northern California's largest distributor overseeing uh, their entire craft portfolio, including a lot of uh, nationally recognizable brands such as New Belgium and um, 21st Amendment, Sierra Nevada, uh, as well as a lot of smaller local um, <laughs> uh, brands. We're off to a good start. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're such as Calicraft, Heretic. Uh, so I oversee beer education training, for about 500 sales reps. Uh, this distributor, as well as uh, oversee the strategic sales efforts and, and launches of uh, a lot of breweries here. Uh, and then I got into cigars just about two years ago. Um, I don't I don't do things half-heartedly. So uh, as, I, as I said, I, I, I've now story. become a, a consumer t- tobacconist. Um, I've been down to Honduras thanks to Cigar Dojo. We'll be returning again in March. And uh, you made the cut. Uh, I believe I did make the cut. Nice. I, I actually took a job with Dojo just so that I could make the cut. So you know, it's funny. Okay, that's I tricked you guys. They they actually they asked me, they being Eric and Jordan asked Randy and I to do the show and um, asked me to host it because you know I've got some experience with that and and I didn't even make the cut to go to Honduras. You had to actually sign up, Rob. I did. <laughs> I signed up. I filled out the sheets. I did uh, the background. Ch- I didn't pass the background check. Ah, is, that makes sense. I think is the issue. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding warrants or something. Is that your way of saying that you couldn't get your uh, your passport <laughs> updated? No, I couldn't get my wife to let me go. Oh, that background check. No, the back the uh, the the uh, the passport is is ready. Um, so. Okay, so you're a professional beer drinker, professional cigar smoker. Professional beer drinker, novice cigar smoker. Indeed. But, but um, headstrong and, and heavy into it. <laughs> uh, I, I believe you're supposed to be the one on the show that brings the cigar savvy and, uh, and industry knowledge. If that's the case, we're screwed. <laughs> um, so I've been in uh, the cigar industry, in and around the cigar industry for about a decade now. I uh, started with my own website back in the day, <clears throat> doing reviews and such, and then uh, was recruited to uh, resuscitate and uh, manage a website called uh, Cigar Federation. I uh, did that for a few years. Uh, back in 2016, I took a job working as uh, doing brand management for a cigar company called Mombacho Cigars based in Nicaragua. I uh, worked with them for a few years. Uh, during that time, um, I had an opportunity to work with a local brewery in San Francisco called Laughing Monk, uh, doing brand management for them as well. Uh, they've been around since 2016, uh, but the beginning of uh, 2000, what year is it? 19? 19. 19. Uh, <clears throat> that job became more uh, of a full-time gig for me and uh, I had to make that decision. And while it was a tough choice between beer and cigars, I... I like the idea of being able to, I'm at the brewery three or four times a week, um, a lot of face time with the people that I'm working with, which is uh, <clears throat> important to me, so that was uh, that was what helped to make that decision for me. So, so you're actually a professional in both industries. 
you're using the term professional very loosely, but, uh, <laughs> but yes, I am, uh, I am involved in both industries. Let's say that. Um, but, uh, I've been a beer drinker. Let's see. I'm 41, almost 42. You so, I've, so I've, thank you. <laughs> so I've been drinking, I've been a beer drinker for about 36 years. That sounds Is that legal? Right. That sounds about right. Um, but I'm excited. So I, I really dig uh, Mexican lagers. I've, I'd never really had a craft Mexican lager mm. uh, until fairly recently um, <clears throat> when the brewery that I'm with, uh, we made one. And when I tasted that, I was like, wow, that's that kind of blows the other stuff away. So it really opened up a, a beer style for me that I wasn't really familiar with. Sure. Um, you know, with, with this, well, statistically reading through it, you know, it's going to have, you know, less than 20 IBUs, 4.8% alcohol. Uh, you can tell that it has a little more flavor than your macro uh, mass-produced uh, Mexican lagers. The, the flaked corn that they use is a little bit more prevalently um, uh, sweet, has, has a little bit more of that corn characteristic than a lot of your standard Mexican lagers. A little bit more flavor forward. And what this is checking in at oh sorry. Four eight. Four point eight percent ABV, so that's that's not a lot. It's a very refreshing beer. Yeah. Um, with a lot more flavor than uh, you're probably used to expecting uh, from a, <clears throat> a Mexican lager. So I uh, I was talking with Skip a little bit. Uh, Skip uh, Martin <clears throat> Romacraft. Uh, about this, I'm going to keep futzing with the mic until I get it right where I want it. I had it where I wanted it, and then I moved it, and now it's all jacked up again. But hopefully you guys can still hear me. <laughs> um, but I'm going to keep moving it around. So <clears throat> I, 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 when I told Skip, I said, hey, we're doing, uh, since you know this was the one, one time that you and I got to pick the blend, yeah. or pick the, uh, uh, the pairing, rather, um, I let Skip know. I was like, hey, but this is a cigar that we're doing. Do you have any kind of insights? And the first thing he says, it's my favorite blend. That's a pretty high praise. I, th I thought that was pretty cool. I, I yeah. didn't real. I had no idea, um, and I'm not trying to pretend like I know Skip personally and we hang out or anything. Uh, but um, but we hung out recently. Just well, saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I've known Skip for a while, and uh, he's uh, <clears throat> he's an opinionated guy, and I appreciate the, that about him. He doesn't really. He kind of sticks to his guns, and I appreciate that. Um, anywho. Uh, he said this was his favorite blend, and that, that um, <clears throat> I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, a couple other things here as my uh, notes have closed up on me. Um, he, uh, he also knows the guys, the, the guys from 21st Amendment, met him at GABF, um, the Great American Beer Festival in, um, in Colorado. That's coming up. That is coming like up, a month first week of October. Um, I've never been. Maybe someday I'll get to go. Uh, so I asked him why he uh why he went with this particular rapper and he said you know he was he was interested interested in it initially because of the Toronto 1959 50th anniversary um or 50 year uh it was a cigar that he really liked and has that same rapper which uh, rapper is that the brazilian avada kedavra <laughs> a rapper a rapparaca a rapparaca is that a, what that's we're what going i'm with? going with a rapparaca that's well, based, you're the host of the show, so based we gotta on, like make it official here. I'm going a rapper, a rapper rock. Yeah, that's right. that's how I'm going for it. Okay. And but like I said, I've heard it so many different ways. Um, he also said that uh, Jonathan Drew told him that it was a tough rapper to work with, and that to him, to Skip was <clears throat> not really like a personal challenge, but a challenge in the sense that this is okay. If, if you know, if my my peers, my colleagues have a hard time working with this, I want to give it a shot. Yeah. Um, and he likes to also work with uh, rappers and, and, and uh, rappers, but not just rappers uh, in general, but uh, you know, tobacco leaves, different things that, that other people are working with that are maybe popular at the time or not popular at the time, and doing something a little bit different with it. So that was some of the, uh, the insights that he had on the cigar itself. Um, I love Brazilian tobacco. I, I think it's extremely flavorful. It's, I think it's, it's kind of an underutilized rapper, really. But at the same time, when if you really look at it's like one of those things, like if you buy a, like if you buy a Mustang, right? You're driving around in a Mustang, and then you'll start to notice there's Mustangs everywhere. Sure. Because you're looking for it, right? Yeah. So if you're not looking for the Avada Kedavra wrapper, 
then you're not going to you're not going to notice that it's everywhere. Uh, but when you start looking, you're going to oh, this has it, this has it, this has it. Uh, anyway, that's that's just what I think. No, it's great. <laughs> Harry, Harry Potter fan much? The what now? Nothing. So, what are your initial? Uh, and I'll be honest, this is the first time I, I have smoked this cigar before. This is the first time I've smoked this particular size. And we are smoking, which one are we smoking here? The Ambition, I believe, was the... Uh... Yes. It's a five and a half by 54. That feels about right. Yeah. Almost feels like a 56. But it's a bigger ring gauge than uh, I normally gravitate to. But really smooth. Yeah. Really, I mean, we're only... We're, we just barely got to the wrapper. Because it's kind of had that little bit of open foot yeah. down at the bottom. Not like a shaggy foot, but just a little bit of open foot down at the bottom. Uh, so we're just now getting into the wrapper. Uh, but uh, so far, so good. Real smooth smoke. Um, a little bit of kind of a bittersweet uh, flavor on the tongue so far. And I'm just going to go out and say it. I'm, I'm thinking that this pairing is really going to probably benefit the cigar and maybe take away a bit from the beer. But before we get into all that, Randy, talk a little bit about, because you do this professionally. I mean, you will stand in a room in front of five people or 500. Tens of people. <laughs> <laughs> dozens of people. <laughs> and um, I don't, I don't want to stand in a room in front of dozens of people. Um, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't like, like, I'm fine with this. I can talk to a camera. I can talk to you. No problem. You put, like, five people in front of me. It's like, hey. So, um. You like that noise? It's <laughs> the first time I've ever made that sound. Um, Somehow, don't so, believe that. So, g- <laughs> so give me give me a little bit of background on what you do as far as presenting to people on some of the the um, like the cornerstones of pairing in general. Sure. Uh, so, whether you're pairing food and beer, cigars and beer, uh, anytime that, that that you're trying to uh, perceive flavors in combination with two uh, subject matters. Um, you, you'll be looking at, at, at two major pillars of pairing. Um, we, we start with intensity, uh, sometimes called impact. Uh, but the intensity of, of your pairing is going to be driven by the intensity of each of the two uh, things that you're trying to pair together. Uh, so you want to match uh, the intensity as closely as you can to be able to allow each one of those things uh, to really speak and and really have its own platform so um, uh, an example of that uh, would be you'd, you'd want a strong intensity cigar with a strong intensity uh, beer typically um, so in, in food pairings I, I always use the examples of you you wouldn't want to eat barbecue with a German Hellas that has some nice, sweet, light, grainy characteristic in the beer, it's going to be totally overpowered by the smoky and, and spicy uh, um, and rich characteristics of the barbecue. The intensity is going to be way off. You're going to have a high-intensity food with a low-intensity beer. And vice versa, if you were uh, eating a you know light salad with a, with a fish, um, having an imperial stout with it is going to totally... That sounds be- awful. Yeah, it, all that chocolatey richness, it's going to mask some of those flavors uh, that's coming from, from the fish. And so your palate is going to become acclimated to those stronger flavors and be less susceptible to perceive those lighter nuanced flavors. Um, so in this case, um, you know, we're actually dealing with a beer that I would describe as uh, fairly low intensity. There is some pleasant sweetness from the corn. Um, but other than that, it's it's a, a beer that's made to be very refreshing, very light in flavor. Like I said, you know, being a craft version of this, it's going to be a little bit more flavor forward than, than your standard uh, macro um, uh, Mexican lagers. Uh, but still, overall, the style is going to be pretty low intensity. Uh, just so we're clear, I don't think this cigar comes in a Corona Vitola. Is that the only Vitola that you can think of that it doesn't come in? No, but I've, it felt topical. Aha! <laughs> 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 See what he did uh, there? Aha! <laughs> <laughs> um, so after, after intensity, 
Um, you want to talk about the intensity of this, of this cigar a little bit before we move on to so, the next pillar? <clears throat> the intensity is actually starting to pick up. Yeah. Um, it's like I was saying, these do have, I, I guess you'd call it an exposed foot. I don't know if there's a specific term that, that Skip likes to use. Um, where there's like a maybe an eighth of an inch at the bottom of this where you're uh, you're just smoking the binder and the filler. And so those first few puffs, <clears throat> to me, were you know kind of mild, smooth. And then you get that wrapper and that flavor intensity uh, starts to pick up. It's, you notice it started moving? It's weird. It's like, it's, look at that. Look at it go. <laughs> Um, it's like it's like there's ghost movie. Um, so yeah, I'm getting a lot more uh, intensity of flavor uh, from this particular cigar at this point. Uh, chocolate. It's still kind of a bitter sweet chocolate, yeah. not like yeah. a not like a milk chocolate. So it's not super sweet. There's a bitterness factor in there uh, that's very pleasant. Uh, there's an earthy element to it. There's a little bit of like a leathery coffee undertone. I know that leather and coffee are two different flavors, but um, to me, it all comes together from that kind of earthiness. And I'm, I'm waiting for that that uh, sweetness that I know comes from this wrapper that I've tasted from this wrapper before to uh, to kick in to get kind of a to bring all that stuff together. And get kind of that chewy uh, that chewy vibe. Not quite there yet, but we're about a half inch in. What about you? Um. I'm with all those descriptors. I think that's a pretty apt description. Um, so, so that's intensity. Um, moving on to the second major pillar of, of pairing would be the flavor hook. Uh, so the flavor hook is is a similar or contrasting flavor combination that you can tie uh, into both things that you're pairing. So uh, you might have a beer that's very hop forward that has hop characteristics of the Pacific Northwest which are known to be very citrusy uh, and you know from time to time there, there you can get a citrus note uh, from tobacco um, it's definitely one that I've seen in a lot of uh, descriptions for for some cigars so, so you could try and find a pairing where you have citrus on both sides and that'd be your flavor hook um, uh, as far as a flavor hook for the beer here um, Again, with it being a very light uh, and refreshing beer, I don't even really get much of the malt character in, in here. I think the corn is, is the only real like standout flavor contributor of, of that that sweet corn characteristic that Mexican lagers can be known for. Um, so that would be the flavor that I get here. You get any? I don't. I don't know if it's because of what you were just saying. You used it as an example, but I'm getting a little bit of citrus out of it. The cigar or the beer? The beer. Oh, pardon. A, a little bit. Uh, no, not a ton. Um, but it's, it's the beer, it frankly, is, is acting as a palate cleanser for me. Yeah. But it's it's a palate cleanser that it's not just water. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with water, but, <clears throat> I mean, I'd rather have a beer. You know what I mean? It's safer. Beer's safer to drink than water. Keeps scurvy away. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, so one thing that we'll have to work on is not taking you not it sipping at the same time. <laughs> Don't sip at the same time. It's, see, it's a learning process. You guys hopefully will learn a little bit from us. And I know we're being a little bit silly, but at the same time, and this is something that we take uh, we take pretty seriously, but it's a very laid-back vibe. Um, as is, if you're, I'm assuming you guys are familiar with Dojo Nation, everything is super laid-back. and um, <clears throat> That's one of the things I love most about this community. But um, we do take this pretty seriously. But at the same time, this this type of pairing, to me, there's not a whole lot of thinking involved here. Sure. It's, I've got a cigar that is uh, getting a little bit better with every single puff, um, and I've got a beer that is, I've had before, it's solid, it's nothing special, um, but it's, it's, don't take that as a negative, you, you flinched. I think, uh, I, think I, mean, I told the owners of 21st Amendment to, to log in and watch no, this. I don't mean, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's, I think it's very special. It's, it's. There's just no coming back. There's no coming back from that. What I mean is, it's it's a very approachable beer. Maybe Absolutely. that's a better way to Absolutely. put it. Um, well I, don't, I don't mean any of that is negative. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, but it's it, it's serving the purpose of keeping me hydrated, right? Because you know when the more that uh, the more that you smoke cigars, and, and this will change with different types of cigars, and you guys are all familiar with this. Some cigars are really dry out your palate. Sure. Um, <clears throat> this is not one of those cigars in particular, but. 
uh, every now and again, I'll find myself smoking a cigar where it's like, man, I'm taking like two or three sips of whatever it is that I'm drinking uh, in between each puff. Well, let me, let me ask you, as, as I'm still the novice uh, smoker on the team here, so, you know, one, one of the things that I taste for now uh, when I cut a cigar is uh, saltiness. Mm. It, it would, would saltiness be uh, a precursor, a, a kind of a, a warning that this is the type of uh, blend that's going to mm. dry out my palate more? That's a good question. I wish you would have prepped me for that before, <laughs> uh, before the show. I wouldn't think so. No. Um, I, it, you know what? I've I've never looked for, uh, and somebody can feel free to chime in in the comments below. Uh, I've never looked for that linked characteristic between cigars that uh, that do kind of lend to a drier palate. Because um, I've definitely noticed that sometimes I salivate more. Sure. Uh, versus I get more almost kind of a cotton mouth dryness yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, from the cigars. It's, it's dependent upon uh, the different parts of your palate, the parts of your tongue that are activated by the different flavors that you're getting, be it salty, be it uh, sour, be it sweet, uh, <clears throat> bitter, or umami. Yeah. <laughs> All those Lesson. things. So, we're about, I don't know, about an inch in here at this point. Yeah. And to me medium strength on the cigar medium flavor medium body uh, but it is ramping up and I think by the time we get to the end of the show we've got probably I don't know another 10 minutes or so <clears throat> maybe 15 uh, <clears throat> by the time we get to the end it, I think this thing's really gonna start kicking in it's um, I would be intrigued to smoke this in a smaller ring gauge and I have smoked the, uh, and I'm, I'm scrolling here because I want to make sure I get the name right of the one that I did smoke. Um, the, uh, oh, the, the Avarice. It's a short Robusto, but it's actually a 52, so it isn't that much smaller for a gauge. But that was the other size that I smoked, 4.5 by 52. It's an interesting size. Yeah, I've got some Lonsdales of these that I, I think might be the smallest ring gauge that they make. I believe they call it the AWS. Um, I really dig the uh, Roma Craft Lonsdales. Everything I've smoked in that size has been fantastic. You actually had the uh, the EC18 here uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, in that. In that. Age. That's a phenomenal cigar. Yeah. Um, yeah I love the intemperance. So. I've been a big uh, Lonsdale guy for years now. It seems like every time I smoke a cigar <clears throat> and I'm really drawn to that particular cigar, it's because I smoked <laughs> the Lonsdale size or... Lonsdale Corona Gorda, something in that 44 to 46 ring sure. gauge. Um, uh, and that, to me, it depends on the blend, of course. I mean, it, it can be different for everything. But uh, that particular size, for whatever reason, uh, it calls to me. It's my siren song, if nice. you will. Well, it, you know, I was really drawn to the backstory on these cigars. Originally, you know, obviously making my career in the, in the beer industry, uh, I'm very well aware of... Uh, what prohibition did to the beer culture of our country and uh, when the 18th amendment was uh, first passed it was through the temperance movement uh, that you know it, it was being it was being said that alcohol was evil and this and that and it was the intemperance movement uh, that kind of um, appealed to tampering back some of those uh, you know, wildly uh, inappropriate ac accusations against ethanol. Um, <laughs> wildly and, and, inappropriate <laughs> accusations. And, and, and I, I love that, that Skip and, and the guys over at Roman Craft really wanted to call back to, um, it's, it's kind of a, uh, kind of a, a, a warning of, uh, of wisdom to people that, that prohibition was a terrible time of crime. And, and, uh, and, and like I said, it, it crushed a big piece of, of, of American culture going through uh, that prohibition and so um, as I read it uh, it wasn't directly from them but as I understood the story was it was kind of uh, the guys down at Roma Craft calling to um, a warning of we're, we're somewhat going through a bit of a temperance movement uh, currently against tobacco and uh, you know we've seen in neighboring uh, countries to the north of us you know major movements towards 
not prohibition of tobacco, but uh, considerable limitations uh, to consumers' access to the marketing uh, of tobacco. And obviously, uh, premium tobacco is something that we're very, very fond of. And uh, I would imagine we do enjoy it. <laughs> I would imagine those in the audience that, uh, that are watching are, are feeling that way as well. So, uh, so I, I, I like that there's kind of a call out to that. Yeah, no, it's the whole the whole vibe with Romacraft is is very cool. Um, it's uh, it's a brand that uh, I've smoked for a while. Um, I haven't really gotten there's they've got some like really cool uh, cigars, the craft series, and all that stuff that it, they get really really hard to find. Mm. Uh, so I haven't smoked a lot of the cool stuff yet. Uh, I've got some um, thanks to uh, my good friend Lewis. Uh, out in uh, New Jersey, uh, Lewis uh, recently sent me a, a bunch of Romacraft stuff to smoke, so that's um, burning my way through that, um, but I do appreciate that. So I want you to uh, take a few puffs of your cigar and think on this uh, while I talk a little bit about um, you know, the, the upcoming episodes uh, as we get towards the, or in the, the final stretch of this uh, first episode here. Um, think about what kind of flavors you're getting and what you would pair with that uh, mm -hmm. that cigar as um, if you were just trying to pair something not at the mercy of numbers or trying to come up with something that was cool because they're both about the 21st amendment but you're it's a Saturday you're smoking this cigar and you're like you know what I want to have a good beverage could be anything but give us a beer and then maybe something else um, so now now I'm talking to you the audience <laughs> um, so Part of the part of the deal with this show is we want you guys to have input on the pairings that we do moving forward. So our next episode, we're going to be airing every Wednesday, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, will be the Facebook Live uh, for each episode, and uh, you can watch the episodes live. You can uh, you know post questions. Um, I know Randy and I most of the time won't have access to those questions while we're recording. Um, Eric and Jordan will be uh, kind of monitoring those and, and chatting back and forth with people. Randy and I will chime in if we can. Uh, but for the most part, it'll be uh, Eric and Jordan. Um, but uh, we want you guys to give us some input on what you want us to pair. So next week's episode is brought to you by the letter A. <laughs> and so we're going to be looking for a cigar that can be reasonably passed off as something that starts with an A. It could be Arturo Fuente. It could be... Uh, uh, something in Añejo. Yeah. Yeah, anything that starts, anything that's, anything. Like, you can see with, we went Roma Craft Intemperance BA XXI. We went way out of the box right off the bat. So, there's a lot of leeway here, but at the same time, we want to be true to, uh, true to that, uh, to that style. Uh, and then also, chime in with some beers. The problem with beer is it can be really regional. We went with 21st Amendment. It is a local brewery, but they're available 28 states. In 28 states throughout the country. So that's probably right. Like 25 is probably going to be like the cutoff, right? Probably, because probably we, got, we want you guys to be able to uh, to have these pairings with us right. and uh, and chime in with uh, with your experiences, either live with us or you know post them afterwards. So give us some beer ideas. Give us some cigar ideas. Um, I, we can't promise that we'll use them, uh, but hopefully we can. You know, for the most part, moving forward. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, we want to do something that's accessible to everybody. Cigars yeah. are pretty easy, yeah. unless you're going with something real specific. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, like, you know, real limited edition or store exclusive. I was about to say, we won't be yeah. doing store exclusive. Yeah, we kind of want to <laughs> stay away from those uh, just to make sure that uh, that everybody can play along. Yeah. Uh, play along nicely. So, um, so that's kind of the, the idea there. Uh, right, what so we'll do is we'll do a little uh, Facebook Live every Sunday. Um, to remind you guys to give us some feedback. Uh, or Sundays we're going to be announcing the pairings, right? Is that how we're doing it? How did that work again? Yeah, we're doing on Sundays we're going to announce the pairings. So you guys have a couple of days to do it. So I'll probably do a Facebook Live maybe uh, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, something like that. And uh, Randy will do them sometimes. I'll do them sometimes. And we'll just uh, we'll BS for a little bit. And you guys can leave some comments below with uh, you know uh, ideas for pairings. I know we had a lot of people say, uh, Liga Pravada T52 would have been a good one for uh, for this episode, and it would have been. Um, but uh, like It'll I said, also work for L. It'll work for T. Yeah, that's. Would it, it, would it work for P? 
Uh, Pravada, sure. why not? Why not? And D? For Drew Estate? Absolutely. E? Is, I mean, that's all, yeah, we could, uh... Yeah. It, we're flex. E, we're flexible. Yeah, we, we want to we wanna have some fun with it. We want to be outside of the box. Uh, we do want to have some good pairings as we go, um, selfishly. <laughs> but we want to have some really bad ones, too, because yeah, I think... Absolutely. Like, and you can speak on this better than I can, but, like, a bad pairing is not a good experience, but it's a good learning experience. That's right. That's right. Under, understanding uh, contrasting flavors is is often a lot harder to vocabularize or, or to even wrap your mind around, really, um, when things clash on, on the palate and, and don't work well together. But but it really draws your mind more to uh, to to paying attention to flavor. You know, as a beer judge for so many years, people have asked like, how do you develop a palate for it? And honestly, my my answer after doing this for 18 years is pay attention. Uh, you, know, you know, it comes down to I don't drink anything uh, where I'm not focused on what flavors I'm experiencing. Uh, I, I catch myself swirling and smelling my glass of water sometimes just just out of, out of habit uh, because I'm paying attention to it. So I think putting yourself in a, in a situation where, where you experience those uh, contrasting flavors it, 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 where it doesn't really work as such a good pairing uh, it, it just makes you focus that much harder on, on what about this just isn't resonating with me because you, you typically kind of know it you have yeah. a sense of yeah this is really working well together uh, or it's not yeah and my favorite part of what you just said it was all very important stuff <clears throat> but you said as you were saying pay attention I was doing this because <laughs> I was going down to check my phone uh huh I wasn't paying attention, right? As you said, pay attention. You're the only one that. But I was paying attention it. enough to hear it. I was. I've got the timer down here. I wasn't checking like my fantasy baseball team or anything like that. Uh, not that I would check that during no. a show. Come that on, would be super Are you inappropriate. Kidding? Uh, okay, so let's let's jump back. Yeah. We've got maybe another five or six minutes. This particular cigar. What do you want to pair with it? All right. Well, let me start by saying. Again, right out of the gate, uh, we knew that the intensities on these didn't match very well. And I'm not really, I don't think this is the greatest of pairings right here. Uh, so let's start there. So I, I wouldn't go Mexican lager with a Brazilian Arapica. A Vada Cadaver. <laughs> um, a, a Maduro uh, is such a, a strong, intense flavored cigar. Um, I, I think you said in the beginning, I think the cigar benefits a little bit from it as you do have a little bit of sweetness in, in the beer. And so it does make for a nice palate cleanser, but it's not necessarily really um, uh, bringing out or, or uh, lifting up any specific flavors with the cigar to where it's more enjoyable uh, as a result. Um, what I would go with, um, I'm a sucker for an Imperial Stout. Uh, I think as soon as this show is over, we're going to be cracking open a, a bottle of 50-50 uh, Eclipse Bourbon Barrel Aged uh, in Four Roses Barrels uh, next. Um, i be taking and, an Uber home. <laughs> and I honestly think that, uh, that the sweetness in that beer, along with the intensity of flavor, is maybe going to draw out a little bit more of that chocolatey, um, mm -hmm. rich characteristic that I'm experiencing in, uh, in lower levels currently with this cigar. I'm on board with that. <clears throat> to an extent. I think going, and we'll find out, yeah. and we'll report back after we find out, of course. Can we do uh, another show? I think uh, <laughs> we can do like an after after hours. Uh, the after, uh, oh, the, the, the uh, yeah, something like that. Like the, uh, there's, a, there's a radio show that my wife listens to. They do like the, they call it the secret show. Mm. Where they record that separately and whatever. Yeah, it's not a secret. Password? No, it's like a, you just have to know about it. Up, down, up, Maybe down. BA. Left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. Um, there's a B, A. Is it a, I don't know. There's it's B, A. B, A. There's B, A. <laughs> Full circle. Full circle. And it, and it just keeps coming back. Um, I think maybe something barrel-aged might be a little too strong. Uh, for me, I'm thinking like a, like a porter, not too over the top. The beer that we had initially wanted, the seasonal offering from um, uh, from 21st Amendment called Monk's Blood is one that we yeah. was, was an initial beer that we wanted to pair with this. 
And I think that we were onto something there with yep. that. I yeah, think I that uh, and Monk's Blood. I don't want to say the wrong thing of what it is. Can you? It I is, know you know. It is a Belgian dark strong mm-hmm. uh, with cherries and cocoa nibs. Mm-hmm. The best kind of nibs. <laughs> I, I, I I do like. Uh, On a later episode, we'll explain <laughs> nibs to you. <laughs> is it cocoa or cacao? Really? This is live television. <laughs> Call me out. It's cocoa nibs. <laughs> um, all right, it's a cow. I, well, I was just that was just asking. I didn't, you said Africa cadaver. I did, so. well, I, but I, I I owned it. I knew I was wrong. Yeah, this you guys are gonna get a lot of this because we actually genuinely like each other. But there's just a little bit of you know <laughs> gotta throw a little the elbows every now and again. You uh, you threw me under the bus and I said the beer wasn't special. So, but now I brought it back up again for some reason. Um. So I think something in that, like a, like, like we were just talking about, the monk's blood, yeah. um, something with a bit more of an earthy kind of sweetness. Yeah, no, you're right. I don't want to go over the top with the sweetness, and I don't want to go over the top with the strength of the beer, but uh, something along those lines I think would be very nice. Uh, maybe I think a milk stout might be a little too mm. sweet, um, but uh, maybe maybe a coffee stout um, would would work. Without going, I, I think we should spend a significant amount of time digging deeper into this because this sounds like a wonderful experiment to try and find a great pairing for this. Because those all sound delicious. I, I think we, yeah. Well, and then I would, I could think of probably about like any whiskey outside of Scotch that I have mm. in my cabinet. Um, any nice aged rum, uh, Florida Cana Twelve. I like the Twelve better than the Eighteen. I just do. Although Skip posted the other day about this new Florida Kanye that had like some special cap, it's a 30th anniversary or something, and I'm I might fly down to Nicaragua just to get that. You think he drinks that with Coke and wine? Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> Seriously, Sorry, man, Skip. Skip, like I hadn't had a rum and coke for like a decade, <laughs> at least. The Latin really did brighten it up. It and, was a nice and I and I, I I I had a lot of them that night and. I didn't drive home, and uh, it was, we had a blast. It was a great time, but I paid for it the next day. I was way too much sugar in my system. So, okay, let's pull it back. We've got about another five minutes, probably like two or three minutes, actually. With this particular beer, what kind of pairing do you think would work? I mean, you got to go something pretty light. I think something a little bit sweet. I mean, Connecticut wrapper, Connecticut shade, I think is... Probably where we would have to go. How sweet would you like to go with that Connecticut? Um, the Sobra Mesa Brulee, possibly? I, that cigar is just a little... The beginning of that cigar is a little too sweet. I don't like to keep bringing that up. Um, <laughs> well, you mentioned I, it. I, I actually think, think that would pair it, it might, it, it, might well pair, it might pair very, very well. The um, the other intemperance, the one that we smoked the other day, the Lonsdale, the, the EC. EC-18, yeah, yeah that, was, that might go really well. Although that had... A bit of a, a kick to it too. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's a I, bigger. I think we need to go with than... more of uh, like your old school um, Connecticut for something like that, um, like a, an old school kind of Davidoff style. Mm. Um, I think something like that could work. It would be interesting to try and find a pairing that would work specifically with this style of beer. But with the theme of this show, we just won't. No, be it's able a, to... no, it's just food for thought, and these are that's half of the reason that uh, you guys would watch this is to get some ideas for. You know, when you're sitting on your patio on a Saturday, uh, hanging out. So that could be interesting. Um, <clears throat> I think that kind of brings us to the end. I mean, we, I think we both agree this isn't a great pairing. It's it's fine. I think we're losing a little bit of the sweetness from the cigar because of the sweetness from the beer. Frankly, I think it's kind of running over a little bit of that because uh, I'm still getting a lot of chocolate, but it's a, kind of a bitter sweet chocolate. Uh, and I think there's some more sweetness hidden in here that we're not really getting. Uh, but the body really has picked up. Yeah. Into the middle of the cigar, to not like not a full, not full strength, not full body, maybe medium plus. Yeah. Getting into that range. Um, so for next week, we're looking at letter A. We will be back on Wednesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, everybody else, you can figure it out. I believe um, that would be 2 p.m. Pacific, but he was close. Did I say what did I say? <laughs> three. You're three, right. Three hour difference. Your math is hard. <laughs> Math is so hard. We never said there'd be math as part of the show. It's, 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 it's not. Slavery. It was not in the job description. <laughs> um, so 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. You are absolutely correct. 
uh, with letter A, and we will um, <clears throat> uh, keep an eye out for your ideas. Uh, look for the Facebook Live so you guys can leave your, your messages. Yep. Um, I don't really know how to end it. What do you think? Just, no, say, that's it. just say peace out and we're done. Yeah. Post <laughs> your recommendations down below, and uh, we look forward to chatting with you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate everybody out there who tunes in. Um, thanks to 21st Amendment, even though we bought the beer on our own. But thank you for making such great beers out here in California. Uh, thanks to uh, Roma Craft. Again, we bought these cigars on our own uh, for uh, producing such great cigars. Thanks to the Dojo Nation for all your support. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you next week. Everybody have a great week, and cheers. Cheers.